Hello everyone, my name is Hao Ren Ren. Um, I'm working as the ARC DECRA Fellow and Macquarie University Research Fellow at the School of Mathematical and Physical Sciences at Macquarie University. Um, I'm very pleased and honored to be invited to give a talk at SPIE Photonics West Conference. Unfortunately, due to the ongoing uh, pandemic situation, I will not be allowed to travel to US and attend the conference in person, but still very happy to deliver this um, um, on-demand pre-recorded presentation, and hopefully you will find our research interesting. Before I dive into um, specific technical details, I would like to promote our future group a bit here. Um, so I will establish my own research group at Monash University from June 2022, which is exactly the middle of this year. So we will build a new nanophotonics lab at the New Horizons Research Center, which is the new building for the science at Monash. Monash is a university in Melbourne, um, and uh, um, I will build my own group uh, as the subgroup under the Professor Stefan Meyer, who will also join Monash in, mid in the early of this year. So the research topics in my group that include the structured light and the structured optical materials, but optical materials can be very broad. So that can include metal surfaces, uh, photonic crystals, um, you know, the nano antennas um, and, and even 2D materials or even their hybrid combinations, right? So another focus would be based on their interactions. Using these uh, structured optical materials and then we can interact with the structured light and really interested in um, their light matter interactions. So the research topics that I could offer uh, include 3D metal optics, uh, photonic integrations that use the plasmonic dielectric structures, materials, and the metal fiber optics, uh, where we can put metal surfaces on top of the fiber to directly functionalize the fiber without, you know, couple the light out of the fiber and you do the free space manipulation. So, um, and of course, the structure the light holographic displays based on the flat optics. And lastly, the nano optics uh, where we would like to build the new um, imaging modalities to allow us to achieve this advanced optical imaging results um, from both free space nano optics and um, you know um, endoscope optical fibers. Okay, so let's get it started from the research topic. I will introduce 3D laser manufactured metal optics where we can use the 3D direct laser writing technology to print um, 3D metal optics, 3D metal surfaces, uh, you know, which means that this metal surface doesn't have these uh, restrictions on the single height. In general, based on this um, uh, planar lithography approach, we end up with the metal surfaces with the single height because you have to go through the etching process in general or through some film deposition that has the single height where you lose this uh, degree of freedom in height. Well, if we use the 3D uh, laser printing technology, we can just unleash this um, uh, third degree of freedom in height which can um, achieve better optical responses where I can show later. Another big advantage that uh, I would like to highlight using the 3D laser printing technology is you can put this metal surface on top of the fiber or any other flexible substrate, um, which is generally also difficult to be achieved by the other planar lithography approach. So the first example I would like to highlight is a uh, complex amplitude metal surface, where we can use the height of the nanopillar metal item to control the amplitude, and simultaneously using the implant angle of this um, uh, anastropic nanopillar to control the geometric phase response. Altogether, we can end up with the complex amplitude modulation. Um, and uh, suppose this is the photoresist. Uh, material and before the laser interaction, 
And after the interaction, uh, we have the laser spot here. And, um, you know, based on the two photon polymerization, and once the laser energy density is high enough, that will induce the photopolymerization that can solid can make this um, polymer material to be solid, uh, where you cannot wash away during the chemical development process. And then in the end, after this development, we end up with these high aspect ratio nanopillar structures. Even though the material itself has the low index of around 1.5. But if you make this aspect ratio correct, you still can accumulate a strong uh, biophagent property. For instance, this is an example that in the simulation, we have this nanopillar uh, to be anastropic and orientated with 45 degree with respect to the incident uh, polarization angle EX. So if we're shining on this EX polarization, we can see that the outgoing transmitted light is uh, uh, barely small. However, if we switch the output of this uh, EY polarization, um, and then you can check that this um, uh, major component of transmitted light becomes the EY polarization. So switch from the EX polarization to the EY polarization meaning that our uh, fabricated or to be fabricated 3D metal atom has the strong biophagian property, which can allow us to achieve the geometric phase where we can use this in-plane rotation angle to control the outgoing phase uh, distribution. Um, and then we simulated this um, um, cross-polarization response um, in the in the amplitude part, you can see that this is the vertical axis is the height of the 3D nanopillar at metal atom, and this um, uh, horizontal axis is the length of this um, uh, metal atom. Where we can select this black uh, dashed line here to control the different amplitude, uh, just like the different height. Uh, where we can also rotate the the, the nanopillar. Uh, you know, to control this uh, geometric phase. That ends up with the 64 levels complex amplitude modulation, which is very useful for many, um, more, many optical experiments that I, I will uh, explain later. Um, so one of the major uh, advantages of this is, um, is based on this um, a complex amplitude modulation is for the uh, optical holography that can significantly increase the bandwidth of the single hologram. So what this paper shows is actually from the single metal surface hologram, people can reconstruct not only one single image, but also um, a, a range of image frames like holographic video displays. Um, even though the structure itself is still static, it's uh, still um, it's still passive, right? We don't have to uh, introduce any uh, modulation mechanisms to change the amplitude phase response. Well, we can just uh, shine in different OEM incident beams to optically switch image frames. And the concept is called OAM holography, orbital angular moment holography. For those of you who are interested in this OAM holography or twisted light holography, please just uh, uh, visit my another talk at this conference um, that is um, in the uh, division of complex light and optical forces. So as the example that this is the fabricated using the 3D laser printing technology, we fabricated the, the metal surface hologram to have a, a diameter of 2.5 millimeter by 2.5 millimeter, uh, where if we zoom in this small area, we can see that uh, the metal atoms have a different in-plane orientations to control their face. And also if you look at the oblique uh, view, you can find out that uh, the metal atoms also, you know, each of this uh, metal atom is, has a high aspect ratio, nanopillar, and with different height. And altogether, we use this metal surface to reconstruct experimentally uh, holographic video displays 
where we can reconstruct the two videos from two different image planes. The second example that I would like to mention is the structured light matter surface that can also be achieved using our 3D matter optics. So this is the example why we need a structured light matter surface, which means, you know, down to the single pixel level, not only the amplitude phase, but also the polarization is very important. An example of this is we can achieve this arbitrary 3D polarization, you know, based on this uh, structured light field. At each pixel, you have a different polarization. And of course, if simultaneously you have the strong uh, focusing uh, profile, you know, lens profile, then you can achieve this uh, 3D arbitrary vectorial field. Um, based on this, um, um, you know, motivation, and we can develop the metal surfaces to have a different aspect ratios in the implant directions, as well as different height so that they can have a different uh, dynamic phase changing from the 0 to 2 pi, right? So uh, this aspect ratio, this high aspect ratio nanopillars, they have a different dynamic phase, but simultaneously you can make them to be uh, halfway plates, subwavelength half plates, so that, you know, you just rotate these uh, nanopillars, they give you the different um, uh, polarization rates, uh, outgoing polarization states. Altogether, we can achieve independent polarization and the phase. And then we um, decided to put this um, a structured light matter surface on top of the fiber um, to generate arbitrary structured light modes. Generation of a structured light modes has been um, actively started for many years and been achieved in free space using multiple special light modulators, for instance. In general, you need two special light modulators to control two different polarization components, either in the H-way mode, the linear polarization uh, basis, or the circular polarization basis, and you have to do this coherent superposition and to synthesize arbitrary structured light. But using the metal surface, as we mentioned, you can individually encode the polarization and the phase information so that you don't have to do this two steps superposition approach. You can just use in a single metal surface to create arbitrary structure that beam. And um, yeah, I mean, we can create arbitrary states, including the radio polarization states um, on this um, uh, hybrid order point here sphere. And this is the typical example that we fabricated to create as muso, sorry, to create a radio polarization states. This is the imaging results based on the fabricated sample. So we are still actively working on this um, uh, project. And um, yeah, hopefully you will find our results uh, in this year. The third example that I would like to highlight a little bit more is called 3D achromatic metal fiber where we can put a 3D achromatic metal lens directly on top of a commercial single mode fiber, where we can achieve this broadband focusing and imaging from 1.25 micrometer to 1.65 micrometer that covers the whole telecom uh, communication wavelengths. Yeah, so, okay, how to design uh, a chromatic metal lens, in general, we need two uh, profiles. The first profile is, of course, the lens profile, where we can achieve this focusing of the light. And once we do this uh, first order derivative of this lens profile, we will find out this group delayed response, which means once we do the focusing simultaneously, we introduce the chromatic aberration if you have a broadband illumination. So the second profile that we have to adjust is the group delay profile, where we can just compensate this chromatic aberration, which is a temporal response, so that the broadband illumination can be focused down to the single focal um, volume, you know, the single focal plane. Um, and if we talk about the upper bound of uh, the upper limit of the chromatic metal lens, it's actually recently has been given by the upper bound of the 10 bandwidth product, chi, um, 
you know, of this um, metal lens by considering the, the, the whole bunch of the metal atoms in the lens structure. Okay, for a 3D metal atom, it looks like a waveguide type of the truncated waveguide uh, metal atom. In this case, um, you know, in general, this chi, um, the product response is uh, given by this equation, which can be regarded as the maximal phase delay uh, minus the minimal phase delay. This uh, NEFF is the effective index of this uh, truncated waveguide and the H means this height um, and this uh, omega C um, represents this uh, circular frequency at the central um, you know, wavelength frequency. C is the speed of light. Um, where we can see a very interesting point here, so if we have uh, unleashed the high degree of freedom of our 3D metal atoms, instead of using this uh, planar lithography to fabricate the metal surface that end up with the single height, if we have this height to be uh, adjustable variable, um, so that you can find out that this uh, upper limit of this uh, chromatic lens or the time bandwidth product chi can be uh, largely expanded. So how do we consider this? Maximal phase uh, delay can be achieved in our situation considering the 3D metal atom Peter could be the Peter has the maximal height and simultaneously has this um, uh, effective mode index to be the largest, right? Altogether you have this highest response, largest response in this factor. Well, for the minimal response, we can consider the uh, metal atom has the minimal height and simultaneously the uh, implant uh, waveguide can support the, this uh, minimal mode index so that you end up with this um, uh, multiplication to be the smallest, right? And this gives us this um, uh, equation, you know, it's just uh, one step adjusted from this uh, original equation where we can see if we unleash the high degree of freedom, and then you can see this um, uh, range of this uh, chi time bandwidth product can be enlarged because the height can become a parameter to be adjusted. Okay, so with this uh, big advantage of the 3D metal atom in our mind, and the next step is uh, to build up this uh, 3D metal atom library and uh, trying to find the correct structures to simultaneously uh, offer the phase and the group delay response. So we consider the 3D metal atom structures like this with different height, weights, and the lengths. And we define the aspect ratio R equals uh, omega divided by L. Um, and uh, we set up this metal atom to be only two possible orientations, either zero degree or 90 degree that can remove the polarization sensitivity because you know we know this output of the single mode fiber is polarized it's, it has the random polarization right in order to maximize the benefit of this um, effect of this lens so we have to make this polarization to be insensitive and this is the, our simulated structures of the conversion efficiency of different metal atoms uh, with aspect ratio fixed as uh, 0.4 at the three different wavelengths at um, um, wavelengths, you know, uh, uh, 1250 nanometer, 1450 nanometer, 6050 nanometer. And this is the uh, group delay uh, response uh, that we end up with the group delay uh, range from minus 8 to 14 frames per second. And this is the most interesting plot that we can just, uh, you know, uh, plot this uh, metal atom response against the required um, uh, response from our equation. Basically, we design this lens from the equation theoretical values, and then we plot this uh, phase and the modified group delay response as the great uh, dotted, um, um, you know, dots, right? And then we can just uh, fit, uh, sorry, we can fill our simulated 3D metal atom results as the colored uh, dots. And then the idea is eventually we want to pick up these uh, structures, you know, as the closed to these uh, uh, gray dots to synthesize our metal lens. 
this is the uh, 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 example of our results. So the left part, we can see that this is theoretically required values. Um, and uh, on the right side, we have this elaborate data to, you know, just uh, to closely match this uh, required group delay and the phase response. This is the phase, this is the group delay. Uh, we can see that our lines has been um, very properly designed and with the very good agreement between this uh, theoretical uh, demanded values and this numerically simulated uh, metal atom uh, values. Um, after the design, the next step is to put our chromatic metal lens on top of the fiber and to make a chromatic metal fiber device. In order to do that, we use the beam expansion section, which is a kind of a tower structures, as you can see here, because output of this single mode fiber directly at the fiber facet is very small, around a few micrometer. You know, we cannot really benefit from this uh, metal lens otherwise, because only a few pixels can really interact with the um, with the fiber output, right? To in order to enhance this metal surface effect, we just let the beam to be freely propagate, expanded in free space that is hosted by this um, um, by these tower structures. Uh, we are on the top, we have this uh, chromatic metal lens. So once the beam has the beam diameter of around 100 micrometer in the diameter, so that, you know, that's the place we set up our chromatic metal lens uh, so that, you know, we can achieve this uh, focusing and the imaging all through this uh, fiber without coupling light out of the fiber. And this is the results. If we use a chromatic metal lens on the fiber, you can see we can achieve this uh, chromatic focusing uh, across this broad wavelength range from 1250 to 1650 uh, with the effective numerical aperture of 0 0.1. Uh, where if we have just uh, like the lens profile without adjusting the uh, group delay response, and we still put this uh, metal lens on the fiber, it's a standard diffraction limited metal lens. We can see the focus is a sh it's a drifted, shifted uh, about 75 micrometer when we change the wavelength from 1250 to 1650. So this is the huge advantages that can allow us to do this on fiber imaging using this chromatic metal lens. So this is the typical uh, imaging sample. For instance, you know, from uh, a chromatic metal fiber response, we can see under the illumination of different wavelengths, we more or less can reconstruct uh, same quality of the imaging without changing any distance between the fiber and the object image. Well, if we have um, a chromatic metal lens on top, right, and we still uh, we didn't adjust this distance between the imaging and um, uh, the metal lens, the metal fiber, and then you can see that only uh, once we have this um, uh, correct wavelengths, we can see the sharp image. Well, for the other cases, the image either just uh, get intensely reduced or totally aberrated, you know, um, with a very small intensity response. Okay, so the last slide before I conclude the talk today um, is based on the high quality factor metal surfaces. I will show you in this slide that this 3D laser nanoprinting technology can allow us to print the metal surfaces, not only have this local response, right? We can change uh, amplitude, phase, and um, uh, polarization, even group delay response down to the single pixel level, uh, but also we can, uh, harn we can make the metal surface to harness some lattice resonance, non-local metal surface. This is the example that we, we can fabricate this uh, 3D um, triangular um, nanofin structures where we can harness the surface lattice resonance, first order, second order, bound states in the continued resonances that have this high quality factor uh, response where we can break the symmetry using these uh, triangular structures by, by controlling this uh, triangular opening 
an angle, we can just um, uh, you know easily tune the resonance uh, very broadly uh, across the whole mid infrared wavelength range, even towards the near infrared wavelength range. So the structure that we considered is first they using the 3D laser printing to put these 3D triangular structures in the polymer and then we do the gold sputtering and the coating and make it a plasmonic metal surface. And then we can put these molecules on top of the metal surface, you know, before and after. Um, you know, we can make this uh, metal surface sensing area to be very large and each small pixels has the different resonance. And then if you attach this with the molecules and the molecular response can also be observed, which is a very cool application of this um, uh, metal surface for the sensing um, devices. Okay, so I think we are all good to make summary here. So today I hope I have introduced the 3D metal optics and also its uh, the advantages for the advanced light manipulation in the far field. Um, and also I have shown that the 3D laser net manufacturing is a, a very useful technology that to implement uh, metal surfaces on optical fibers. And then we talk about the 3D metal optics can achieve complete and uh, independent amplitude, phase, polarization, and even group delay down to the single pixel level, which is very useful. Uh, you know, this kind of a parameters very useful for the light manipulation, right? And then um, I have given a few examples that include 3D uh, complex amplitude metal surface hologram that can achieve this holographic video display, a structured light metal fiber where we can generate arbitrary structured light modes that has these uh, vector distributions in the beam cross section, um, as well as a chromatic metal fiber that we can achieve this uh, broadband um, focusing and imaging from the whole telecom communication wavelength range. Lastly, I gave the example of a pixelated metal surface sensor that each pixel consists of a big array of high quality plasmonic metal surfaces that harness the tunable bond states in continuum resonances, which means this uh, metal surface not only for the uh, locally response right for the local response for the far field manipulation but also you know that they, they can have a strong near field uh, interactions and uh, to create this um, uh, non-local metal surface okay in the end i would like to acknowledge my colleagues and collaborators who have given their um, a strong support and a great effort on different projects um, Andreas Einer, Chen Hao, Stefan Meyer from Anime Munich, uh, J. Zhang, John Sok Ro from uh, South Korea Posttech, um, and uh, J. So, Mati, and Marcus Schmidt from uh, Jena, Germany, as well as the different funding agencies to support my research. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Um, if you have any questions or you have a further interest in our research, feel free to drop me an email. Uh, the address is here. As I mentioned that from the middle of this year, I've been moving to Monash University. Um, so feel free to express your interest to, you know, to come and stay. Um, yeah, and all the best. Thank you.